Hello and welcome to The Art Hunter. I'm David Hunt and my guest today, he was born in England to Irish parents but grew up in Northern Ireland, moved to Australia when he was 22, writer, comedian, made his name as a stand-up comedian around the country, appearing on most of the TV shows on the day, uh, both starred and co-wrote two feature films, his own comedy uh, TV shows, uh, and a regular visitor, visitor to the world-famous Edinburgh Fringe Festival, where I hear he does very well uh, every year. Uh, with touring of the UK, has become a popular comedian, many television appearances, even a royal variety performance. Jamoan, welcome to The Art Hunter. Yeah, th th thanks for having me in this beautiful little theatre. Um, ah, oh, there you are. There's moi. I, I love that one with um, uh, the the bathers. The, uh, yeah. the Leonardo oh, da, da Vinci, Vinci. Yeah. yes. That's uh, very, very clever. Uh, what is that, man? It's a name for it, the Man of the Renaissance. Is that what it is? Is it? So, I thought I thought it was, um, uh, isn't it the Circle of Man? You know, like the... Yeah. Oh, look, you know, like we're probably our, our audience is screaming, saying, you idiots, yeah, you yeah. should know what that is. Well, why did you use it if you don't really, if you're not sure what it is? I don't know. Um, and then after you, you know, I had it for Edinburgh, and then I saw Billy Connolly had done something, the exact same thing, 20 years before me, and I was like, I don't know. Yeah, and it's interesting like that though, isn't it? Because you think you're coming up with an original idea, but yeah. a lot of times somebody else has already done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quite frustrating, actually. Um, the Royal Variety Show, you know, like, tell us a bit about that. You're pretty yeah. prestigious to be on a show yeah. like that. Yeah, it's a good show to go on. Um, who was the big guy? Barry Manlow. Barry Manlow. Uh, there was, um, uh, oh, uh, he's a croner. Like Frank Sinatra era, um, um, English or no, American. American? Okay, um, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Oh, oh well shit. done! <laughs> wow, that's a good answer for very little information. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, Tony Bennett. Oh, what a what an amazing singer! Yeah, he's oh, been. That, that was because he's a good age, and it was it wasn't like uh, really blasting big notes. It was just more of that real mm -hmm. heart and sentiment. And yeah. Well, yeah. he does. He's done uh, now a couple of albums with Lady Gaga. Right. Yeah, and they go to number one on the jazz charts. And, right. Yeah. So no, he was uh, he, he he was on the bill. There was lots of other comics. Um, yeah, you know, it was funny. Uh, there was comedian uh, Ahmed Shalili, who is kind of a big star. He was in he was in um, Gladiator. He uh, he's he's like a big. St comic in the UK. So at the end of the show, we do this thing where you walk and the, the, the exit, that, so you have to go walk together bow, and I had it, did it with Ahmed, and he's a real fez, but he goes, right, we'll hold hands and come forward and do the big bow, and we both had good spots. Anyway, I was at home, and my mum said to me, who's the guy you're with? And I go, he's a comedian. She goes, I know him. And I'm like, yeah, you've probably seen him on TV, he's in lots of films. She goes, no, no, I know him. And, you know, I was so disrespectful to her, like I normally was. You know, you don't, you don't know him. <laughs> anyway, my mum passed away shortly after that, like a, probably a couple of months after that. Oh, no. You know, she's a good age, she's got to eat. Yeah, I've met, I've met your mum. Yeah. yeah. And my father came with me to Edinburgh, and uh, I was doing this reading thing with Ahmed. And I said to Ahmed, uh, this is my father, and uh, we're from, uh, and he goes, where are you from? He goes, Port Stewart. He goes, oh, I went to university there. We stayed in flats. And I go, where? He goes, Old Coach Road. And I was, not Miss McKeown. He goes, yeah, that was it. That was it. She did know him. She, he lived in the flats. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. Even from beyond the grave, she was correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny story. It was. It was really funny because I was like, oh, no, I can't believe this. She was absolutely 100%. Yeah. And then I was mentioning, because he's Iranian, and I there's another Iranian guy. And he's going, he's going Yosef. And I'm going, yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> so here you, here you are, you accidentally fall into a, a career, become a household name in Australia. You're like, 
as, as I, I mentioned in the little intro that you were rudely interrupting me, two feature films. Yeah. Where did that come from? How did that happen? That you'd be and you like, and they were very popular yeah, was, too, weren't they? It was kind of just weird, and it? it was just one of those timing things that um, I don't know if I've ever tried to do stand up if I had done it in the UK, um, because here there, you, you you like Irish people like. We're in the UK, my accent's from Northern Ireland, and it's kind of sinister, and it's not really that well received. <laughs> but can't you in turn the around the mainland of England? Like, you know, but, this, but you could turn around and say, "But I was born in England. I'm English." I do. I was. I was born in England. Yeah. Spent the first year of my life. Um, but anyway, like my accent was kind of associated with uh, people giving warnings to vacate buildings. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, so. Then, yeah, it was called Weird Things. So I was just doing stand-up, and then uh, I got asked to do a TV show because uh, they were desperate to have somebody, you know, front, and it kind of went well. And then after I did that, it's just, you know, you just keep trying to, uh, you know, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to try and write a film? And and I was in a flat with illegal, illegal immigrants, and we were all kind of, it's quite funny, like the whole caper of trying to run away from immigration and and then you know so I just thought I'd write a film about that and you know it was just a great thing to do it was a great experience and well con especially considering that um, you know nowadays to get a film a major release as that was yeah. it would be almost impossible with yeah, a, was, with something like that. you know like you must have been just at the right place at the right time yeah well you know the the, the movie the castle did ridiculously well of course and as a result of that doing yep. well guy alan finney from village road show yep. used to go to uh, la luch in chapel street you know a cafe in chapel street yeah and you know, i'd often see him in there and he goes you should write a film and I'd literally written the film, I'd written The Crack. And, and what's it called again? The Crack. The Crack. It's an Irish word for fun. Like yep, yep. C-R-A-I-C. Mm. And then I gave it to him. I just put it into the cafe and then a couple weeks later he goes, yeah, let's do this. You know, <laughs> just that, you know. Wow. So there's no way you can do like, no. So. No. And were you surprised on how successful it went? Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was more surprised that the second one wasn't a success. <laughs> Very disappointed, actually. Um, <laughs> but but because I thought that was good. This is it. This is, this is easy. This is easy. But What's what was really good about it was, I think Village didn't really uh, have much sort of uh, involvement with it. They just give us the money and then we give it to them a year later, and then they showed test audiences and it did really well. And that's the way you should make these things like just. Especially from a comedic point of view, people have to trust your jokes. And then the second film was just too much money and too too many people throwing their two bobs in, oh, and then yeah. it just gets watered down. Yeah, really, yeah. and I never really th I wanted to do it again because I mean, through all of this, I've been doing stand up, and that's the thing that's kind of you know that pays bills is really just uh, doing stand up and doing stand up regularly th uh, throughout Australia and the UK. You go to Edinburgh pretty much every year. Yeah, 27 you, times a time. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you get sick of doing something like that? Because you, or if you, you now are one of the headliners there, you would have to be, wouldn't you, if you've gone that often? Yeah, I mean, it gets a good crowd. Um, I originally went because I was living here and I wanted to have some sort of presence there. And, it's a, and you're like, when you tour normally, you're like one night each place. Maybe like a couple of weeks in Sydney, but the rest of the time you're on the road. So it was nice to go to the UK and be in one city for a month. And mm. then my mum and dad would come up; they'd come and stay, and my sister would come up with her kids. And uh, you know, we'd all meet up there. Mm. And uh, and then after, like I'd always uh, go and see shows or wait until the second or third week to find out what was good. And then we just go and see stuff. And, mm. you know, Edinburgh's amazing for that. Like, it's so hard to go to the West End and watch a musical or a play when you go after seeing the most amazing stuff. Mm. And it's Edinburgh. being tested, isn't it? Mm. You know, like that's what they're doing. And it probably won't exist again. Like, it, mm. it's this kind of thing. It's like yeah. a, in a cloud. It's like mm. you, you go there and you see this brilliant, brilliant play and it never, never seen again. It never mm. moves on to no, another audience. Mm. So. 
But do you worry when you go to somewhere like the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, because there are so many people trying to, you know, like take your spot, yeah. um, that you, you might think that one day it won't work? Um, or you don't? Well, it, it actually didn't work for a long time. Oh, it, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because you lose money. A lot, a lot of people lose money. Most yeah. people lose. Uh, the biggest contributors to the Edinburgh Fringe are the performers. Like the most of them walk away ten to fifteen thousand pounds, thirty thousand dollars down. Whoa! So performing for a month, yeah, and being out thirty grand. <laughs> but if if you get somewhere like you know fifty to a hundred people, you can sort of get by uh, on that. Yeah. yeah, you can. And then like so, after about maybe ten or fifteen years gone, like nobody goes that long. But I was going to catch up with my mum and dad mm. and see family and you know so it was a good might as well work while I'm there and then go to Ireland for a week so yeah. but only after doing it for that amount of time did I start really trying to get a good size audience yeah yeah and they know from the ticket sales who is coming to see and it's mostly people from Edinburgh so Oh, okay. <laughs> they, you know, they put in their postcode and their ticket. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. audience is from Edinburgh, really. You can. So you're not reaching out to the world. Not that reach, that's no, there. but you're seeing like forty percent of it. But the, the, most of it is from people from from the town, and which is fantastic for you mm, because mm. the word of mouth has spread. And yeah, you know, like. Yeah. But how did you crack the English audience? You know, like which, as I said, took a lot longer. Uh, well, yeah, just plugging away. I did like loads of tours to nobody. I did like 50 dates to five people every night, you know, where I was, you know, where you take on a theatre as opposed to being on a bill with someone else. You take on the theatre and you go, right, I'll fill this. And I got five people every night for about 50 nights. Uh, most depressing thing ever gone through my life. Um, but made my stand up very good, I was very sharp at the end of that, because um, nothing could affect me after that. But yeah, so. There was, I think, a number of things. There was a show called um, uh, Michael McIntyre's Roadshow. And that became the new Kingmaker. And I went on that and you could see oh, a okay. stark change in the number of people coming to the show. And then I did live at the Apollo a few times. And, that thing. and then the biggest thing is the clips online. People start sharing stuff on YouTube. Yeah. And then they go, you know, oh, he's got, and I've got loads of no, stuff yeah, from yeah, having years of stand-up. Yeah. So that was probably, okay. you know, there's a couple of things that led, but the big thing is clips that get shared. So you film a lot of the stuff? Yeah, yeah. Because somebody would film it for I you. I film a show at the end of, like, for, do a run for two or three, two years of a show, mm. and then I'll film it quite good and then burn it. That's it, gone, really. And then you release that, mm. uh, but you know nobody buys DVDs anymore. No, no. Was, you, I but, can but remember. People do, people do watch the clips. They and do. The clips. Well, that's add yeah, to your advertising live show. for you, isn't mm. it? Yeah, because uh, you you actually had quite a bit of success with DVD releases back in the day. Yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. You? you know, like videos. Yeah, videos. <laughs> I've got a, and tapes. I've still got, I've got a garage full of tapes. Have you? Yeah. yeah, and you tried your hand at uh, being a musician as yeah, well. Didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. I love music. Um, do you still I, do it? I still play music in my act. Um, I still play guitar, and uh, yeah, I love writing songs. I'm trying to try learn how to play piano, and uh, yeah, so I still do that in my, in my okay. act. Okay, okay. But purely for c comedic reasons, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I do love. Uh, I'm a big fan of Irish music. Are you? Yeah. The Celtic yeah, sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I just love. Yeah traditional music well it is pretty in you know that's like stirring it's yeah yeah powerful yeah. stuff yeah isn't yeah it? yeah yeah. It, yeah it's deep within your in your past so mm. yeah all those all those traditional things i love traditional music not just irish but anything that's traditional if you see or if you see that part of the culture and yeah. you go oh, wow that's really yeah. interesting now let, let's talk about your writing you know like how hard is it to come up with a new show you know and you you were saying that you do the same show for a tour and then you know like you have to rewrite a new show because mm. the you know like same audience are coming back to see you next year when yeah. you go to um wherever um the, the, i remember the the tea towel tour 
um, okay. you know, like that that was such a, a classic. It was a very funny show that you did, and and that you really worked that one, didn't you? Mm. The tea towel tour. That's a long time ago. Right? Yeah, Some merchandise was to sell tea towels. I did. Do you know after lockdown? They they opened up. So you're not going to answer that question I'm, about I'm getting the, to that. Are you getting, getting there? To that. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is about writing because I did. I was it appeared no work for was it nearly two years. That must the, have been really hard. So the first one back was uh, I, I did a trip up the east coast, and you could do half the room. People had to spread out. Oh, that's right. And yes. and then so. I had the, the material I had from the last time, I took that on tour with me, and I thought, I'll add jokes to this, and I'll just build on this. And then after doing that tour, I had less jokes than I started with because <laughs> there was nobody laughing, like the room was empty, <laughs> and, oh, and you're sweating. <laughs> uh, and then I went to Adelaide, and I was really trying to just, so the writing of the show uh, is easy when you're doing lots of gigs. The, Trick is to do loads of gigs. Like even now, I'm doing gigs before I go to Edinburgh. I'm doing the Grand View in a couple of nights. Just doing uh, the Melbourne Public, doing a bowling club. Just going there purely to try a material. Mm. Go to the Comics Lounge mm. uh, in North Melbourne, where you go in on a night, a Tuesday, and you just go in and you just try stuff out. Mm. But you didn't really <laughs> get back to the tea towel tour. Oh yeah, you I see, can't you're, remember. You're totally. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that, didn't well, you? You asked me, what was, is it hard to write? Yeah, um, yeah. But, but you know, like, let's. I wanted to talk about that because it was such an original piece. Uh, you know, like, it was so original. And the drawer in the kitchen, you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. The, I've always loved that. I still remember. Is it the second or third, third drawer? Draw. Third drawer down. And there was a song as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. wasn't there? Well, um, that was the easiest song I've ever written in my life. I opened the drawers <laughs> and wrote down what was in the drawers. <laughs> And that was it. And then the third draw and the fourth draw, it's always got plastic bags in it. And everybody, you know, related to that, everyone goes, oh, that's everybody's draw. And uh, yeah, so that was uh, a but, but thing it's, to write. But it's clever. Somebody had to come up with it, Jamal, and then it was you uh, that came up with it. Yeah. And you're like, that's the key, isn't it? You, you might think that's the easy thing, but you know, like, when did that moment, when did that moment come where you thought, I want a new song, and you thought, oh, let's see what's in the drawer. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Was there a, a moment that you can remember? Oh, we were doing the Jamone show, and at the end of every show, we did some sort of song, and we were, and yeah, I was standing there with Bob Franklin, and I go, look look at this, that seat, look at that, that, that drawer there, that's always got that rubbish, and it's always got that rubbishy stuff, and this drawer is it, and then this one here, look, plastic bags, that was it, and I just kind of needed a song so because I did one at the end of every show I go right I'll write, I'll write some stuff on that yeah but you know any good comedy is something well observed mm. anything you know like I don't I don't do politics I've never done really politics uh, some, some people that's their whole thing they yep. have a comment to make about society whereas I, that's I just find if you can notice little things that are right in front of other people like if I ever watch a comic and they do a really good line, it's, that's the bit that kills me. I go, oh God, I was right in front of me. I've been thinking that, right? That's yep. right in front of me. Yep. And yep. then someone else says it and you go, oh God. Yeah, well that, that's the draw, a yeah. song that you did. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, I thought, how clever. And somebody had to come up with it and you did. Yeah, yeah. Somebody had to come up hit. with it. Yeah. big hit. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody had to come up with the tea towel tour yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, like, how hard was it for you when we're in lockdown for those couple of years, and especially for somebody like you who's on the road so much? Yeah, I mean, like, at 56, I had been a stand-up for 32 years, but anybody starting out, it was financially devastating. It was just and humbling. Like, somebody, mm. I had a friend of mine, he was a going really good comic in Scotland, and he just had to go and get a job at a supermarket, checking, stacking shelves at night. And, you know, he was really going well. Mm. And he just freaking had to bite the bullet and he had rent to pay and yeah. he, he couldn't do anything about it. So, you know, I had a, a, a forced kind of holiday and I was lucky to have been working a long time. How, how did you cope with being home with the wife and kids all that yeah. time? Was that a strain or? No, I really got a nice rhythm. <laughs> And I got into a nice rhythm of going for a walk every day. I went for I went for a walk 
and there was a caravan for sale. And everybody kept saying, you know, nobody's been going overseas. Everyone's going to tour around Australia and, uh, you know, just going to caravan parks. And then I thought, maybe I should do a show at caravan parks because they're outside and I can just do and then travel. So I came up with the idea, pitched it to Channel 10 and they, you know, and by the time they said yes, the pandemic was over. <laughs> I thought. I thought the pandemic was over. I was going, what was the point in this? You've missed the whole reason for doing it. It was during the pandemic. Anyway, we went to New South Wales and I went for filming for two weeks and then we had a week off and the crew flew to Sydney and they went into lockdown in Sydney and then I had to drive over the border and just on the run for five months, like a, like a villain. Like, but um, you did it though, didn't I you? Did, yeah, we did, did the show and, uh, you know, I went to op and, shops and, and that was clothes. clever and that was a clever show yeah that was a great know, show really good show actually i'm really really proud of that like with other comic just go to a caravan park and you've got a captured audience and and you you actually took people with you as well along yeah, the yeah, way. yeah 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 other so comedians it, and other comics yeah yeah um you call them comics i call them comedians I don't know. Oh. comics i say other comedians i say both uh dolly did one dolly diamond did one that's right uh, who else did one that you would know? A lot of comics from Brisbane because we were locked in ah, Queensland. Right. And we no one could come out of, you know, so it was like... But it was great because it was a lot of them that was their first time doing stuff. But a lot of them I knew yeah, kind of well from just doing stand-up. So if you work with people you know, it's so much easier. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey how, how is it, you know, like the community? Because it's such a... You know, like close knit community. So many of your friends are comedians. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like it, it must be hard to get away from it sometimes when you're around them all the time. Yeah, but there are. We, I think we, we look out for each other. I think we're kind of good. Like, okay. Having delved into the film world, and then went to Cannes, and you know, and then oh, did you go to Cannes? No, a couple of times. Did and you? then I saw all the people. I thought. <clears throat> I prefer the comics. I prefer that this group of people. They're much more fun. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to Cannes a couple of times. Made a fool of myself. Then <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, I was good. So, do you want another TV show? Are you ready for it? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, I'll probably try and do the 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 waltzing Jamone again. I don't know that one. What's that was that, the, one? that was the caravan. Oh, one. that was the caravan. That was the caravan right. one. Yep. Yeah, because um, that. You know, like all the nomads you hear about that yeah. are out there, you know, like it, it could be fascinating, you know, yeah. going, going over to and Western Australia. Actually, and, and people are, are choosing that as a, a way of life now because of comp like to live in a house, it's just becoming extortionate. Uh, so, you know, there's a real world of these people that, um, that the TV show didn't really want us to show it, but, you know, within the caravan part, there was all of this, but then there was all these other group of people that lived there and you were going, mm. wow, this is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have a cousin um, who goes up, um, well, hasn't done it for the last couple of years, but goes up into Northern Territory for three or four months yeah. to get away. And they just travel around from one yeah, yeah, caravan yeah. park and they meet somebody that's a hairdresser. So they do <laughs> do the wife's hair and you're know, like, and she makes heaps of dough doing that. You know, like, Everyone coming into the caravan park. Hairdressing is great to travel with, isn't it? Yeah, great business. But you see loads of, like, you just walk around the caravan park and just Victorian number plates, West Australia, people from everywhere, all over Australia, yeah, just doing yeah. this. Can can you see yourself, um, you know, like, getting people to pay for a performance in the caravan park? Um, well, if you can sell a TV show, then, it, yeah. But also because of COVID, it was kind of had to be outside. Uh, they like they tried these weird things during COVID. They tried doing a, like a drive-in cinema where everyone stayed in their car and the comic was on stage. And really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if they really liked the joke, they hit the horn, flash, flash the lights. I watched a couple of them. It was you know, I tried to do a couple of Zoom shows. My oh. God, Talk not of getting dying. any reaction. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> I did one where you know. Um, it's for some corporation and it was at seven o'clock, you know, and they didn't tell me that people would be at home watching with their families. So I'm doing all these rude jokes. Rude jokes. <laughs> and I've got a green screen behind me and I've got a robe on, like I've got a cigar and uh, 
and I've stood up and I've got no clothes on but a pair of green underpants. <laughs> <laughs> See the green screen? <laughs> thing friggin' the thing goes down and they've gone to some presenter. Right, we'll <laughs> leave that there. <laughs> and then they phoned me the next day demanding an apology and wanted their money back. I <laughs> said, sorry, but sorry, but you're not getting your money back. And and, and, and everything has been paid for in well, a year. <laughs> well, exactly. And the fact is, they should have told you yeah, what, yeah. what you know, like who your audience was going to yeah. be. And but it must be hard not hearing that people laugh as well when you're doing it. Yeah, but I'd always ask for like just a handful of people, just at the front, to uh, be have their mics on. Right. Uh, but, but even at that, you know, it's well, it doesn't. If they laughed, and when you were in the middle of talking, wouldn't it cut? Cut your you out because no, it does no, that I think with. It's still, it would still we do work. a test, and you go, if you could just have a handful of people on right. the screen. Okay. And then, um, did you do many of those things? Yeah. Oh, you know, like yeah. TV so. shows as well. Like I would be doing mm. like a Channel Nine the Today program, or oh, uh, or, yeah. You know, just doing those programs from your mm. your bedroom. Mm. And, 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 and everyone get energy up. and everyone was expecting it. Well, because I host uh, trivia nights as yep. well. Um, I, you know, Aaron, um, our mutual friend, and I, I did a once a week a whole show for that, those people. You know, Online. Yeah, on, oh, on oh. Zoom. Yeah, oh, see, and that, there'd be people kind of around worked. Australia, yeah, and yeah. it was hysterical. And we'd have a heart to heart. You know, everyone could tell you know what their week's been like or you yeah. know, their upsets and all that sort of stuff. And then we'd play a game of trivia yeah. in the middle of it all. Um, that, that, that worked well, yeah. But comedy, I wouldn't like to try comedy. So, he you know, did like, this thing what? where he, we go, I go, let me tell you where you are. I can, from your backdrop. And uh, I go to this guy, um, well, that's the 12-step program behind you. And he already oh, moved that. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, so where are you? I'm in rehab, all right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, like, I could imagine situations like that. When going back to, is this your first year going back to Edinburgh? Yeah. So what what are you expecting? Are you expecting that you, you'll get okay audiences? Or? Well, I'm doing a, like a 350-seat uh, like room. Like Whoa. in the previous years, I did a 1,000-seat room. Whoa. So, yeah. How many nights? I did uh, the whole thing, which is probably 28 nights every, every night. Jamal, and that's yeah. huge. No yeah. wonder you go back every yeah, year. Yeah, oh, it's good. It's well, well worth going back for. Um, but yeah, so I just found a new venue. I mean, you wouldn't get that every night. You get you get that Fridays and Saturdays, but you get like, it's a big, uh, it's well worth going there for. And what also was another reason you go is you, you see other acts and you see other really good things that inspire you. And you go, mm. oh, wow, I've got to lift my game here or... Mm. That's good. I really like that. Mm. Um, I'll nick that. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, you know, that's just good to to see sh shows and and be inspired. And because you get every night, then you, at the end of the thing, you've come away with a show more than turning up with a show. And that's the reality for most performers. They don't turn up to Edinburgh with a like. They turn up with an idea for a show. Oh, it, interesting, because I was just going to ask you that. Have you written a special show to take to Edinburgh? No, but I'll... Um, uh, so you're going to arrive in Edinburgh and you will have I'll nothing? Do, well, I have got lots of back Yeah, stuff. come won't, on. It won't be, won't be as good as it is at the end. I've got a friend that uh, he uh, has a sh lot of props, a lot of real daft show, and he, it opens on the Thursday, that's the first weekend, and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are sold out. Sold out. They're not. He's writing the show. He's actually in the theatre trying to figure out the jokes. But he advertises it as being sold out. For okay. the first one, Which is a really good mm. way of getting people thinking. But yeah. oh, in reality, yeah. he's right. Well, what the hell is the show? And, you know, <laughs> and it's always good and always daft. And mm. So you're out on the road again right now. Um, and you, you actually said to me before we came on, you're like getting used to, you know, like some of the jokes that you might use in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, so you are planning it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's only like an hour show. Normally when I go on tour here, it's an hour and a half. I do 45 minutes, a break, another 45 minutes. So it's a, it's a, I've really got the show there, mm. but um, 
I always try and spend time because you get the time to sit there and just, you know, try four or five new jokes a night. Just try stuff, mm. out. and then that's what what makes the show. You just continually, mm. you know, weed out the old, bring in the new. So here you are, you know, like being so famous in your field of being a comedian and now in England as well. Uh, and I love the fact that it's uh, mostly people from Edinburgh that comes to your show in Edinburgh. Yeah. I, I, I really like that. Wh what are you going to do in 10 years' time? Gee, t retire, David? I was, no, I don't know. I would like to still keep doing this for a, a long time. The, the career that Billy Connolly had was mm. amazing. Like that... Um, because Stan, I, I feel like I really would like touch wood. That's not to wood. Be, isn't it, Joe? Is there any wood in here? No, that's that probably is. wood, yeah. Uh, I really like to, um, uh, to be doing stand up because with it, it keeps you sharp. Mm. Now, if you don't do it, like if I don't do it for like a month, I'm like really struggling to remember what it is. Mm. Uh, the, the, the fluency of it, it kind of, you yeah. lose that. Uh, yeah, the, the flow is really yeah, important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And when you're doing it every night, and I'm doing, if I go on tour and I'm doing it every night and actually not being social either, that's another uh, key to it, I've realised. Because being social kind of really can throw you mentally. You have to kind of focus on what you're doing and then, you know, do the show and then just head off to the next place. That's when the show's at its best. So not hanging around, socialising. No, no. But everyone would want you to, wouldn't they? Yeah, we used to do this thing called meet and greet, where yeah. you'd re meet people. I used to call it meet and disappoint, because <laughs> you're so knackered, you come up and you're drained. And then you, you, you and then, oh yeah, uh, and then, oh, hello. Photos, autographs. Yeah, yeah, or just in a room backstage that's overlit and no music or no nothing, no, sense of atmosphere that, that could be conducive to having a, a natural flowing conversation. Yeah. Everyone's kind of, ugh, yeah. this is awkward. Well, yeah, and people are usually shy in that yeah, situation, yeah, yeah. aren't they? I am. I you can, are. Yeah. You, you can be, be a shy, shy person yeah, yeah, at times, can I'm, I'm all right doing the show, but... Yeah. Um, Do but, you, yeah, I go out. I mean, I go out a lot, but if, uh, it does... Uh, if you've done a big show, you can be pretty knackered at the end of it. Mm. Do you sort of think to yourself, ah, oh, I missed an opportunity. I should have had a really good show last night. So I'm going to have to really be you know, on top yeah, of the yeah. game yeah, yeah. tomorrow night. A really good show is normally after a really bad show. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah, I would, I would literally, and I would literally just before go and look at the mirror and go, hmm, well, if I can get this one right. You know, so, so the night before it wasn't good. But why, why does that happen, Jermon? You know, like it's, it's you know it's the same routine that you're doing. Is it your delivery? Is it the audience? What, no, what is the it? audience? The audience. Oh, it's never your it's fault. Never my fault. No. So, you know, it, it just it, it's a it could be a number of things. You know, you could be doing something through the day and you're just not focused, or you're just kind of knackered. Travelling all day and you then you rush to get yeah, yeah, to yeah. The, the gig or yeah, and you don't I have that the, downtime. I did the um, I did the. Uh, the comedy festival on the last night I went on stage and I'd just eaten and I went oh my god I just feel awful I just felt like oh my god like, no one ever performs on a full stomach I you know, should know I, that. that I didn't was it wasn't a full stomach it was just the feeling of I, I, I'm really not feeling well and oh. then towards the second half my throat started to go <laughs> and I couldn't talk and I was like and then I said I think I've got COVID and <laughs> I had. I tested positive the following morning. But it was good timing. I got it on the last night. Last night. And but I literally had that feeling of feeling sick. Yeah, yeah. And then that can be... And then, see, as you say, other times, in your head, you could think it's terrible, but they wouldn't know. But what about that night, when you, you know, like that last night of the comedy festival when you had COVID? Did the show go well, though? Yeah, yeah it did yeah, go well, did yeah. Because okay. you were able to do an act, really. It often falls into middle ground. Like, you could record a, a live show that you didn't think was good. In fact, you thought it was very average. And you watch it back and it's okay. It's mm. okay. You could do the best show you've ever done in your life, record it and watch it back. And it's okay. It's just kind of like never, it's never as brilliant as you think it is. And it's never as bad as you think it is. And that's a nice thing that it's, 
just in the moment and it's over. Like you stand up, you you do mm. that night, yeah. and then you walk out of that room, and then all the laughter, everything, that's it's in the past, really. Yeah. Do you ever um, talk about your kids, not name them, but actually tell stories about you know, like the funny things that yeah, they've yeah, done? So they come up uh, with or do, do they would they get pissed off if you did that? Um, no, I've, I've mentioned uh, a, a few of the things that they that they because you've got four kids, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, yeah, kids are hilarious. They are funny, aren't oh, they? And they think they know everything. Yeah. yeah. When they're small, they can say some of the most oh, yeah. funniest things. Um, yeah. So but they're, they're good material for you. My daughter, when she was born, I I was the first person to hold her when she was five. I said to her, "I was the first person to meet you. I was the first person in the world to meet you." And she goes, "Did you know it was me?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really freaking interesting concept, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. The concept yeah. of you being you before you're even born. Mm, mm. Uh, yeah. See, there you go. That's a, yeah. Have you used that one? No, I haven't. There, there you I don't go. Know, it's it's funny enough. Oh, but it's it is an fun. interesting concept. We all worry about death, but you know, we always never think about that bit before you were born and that bit when you become you. Mm. is really why it kind of... Yeah, but you don't become you when you're a, a baby, no. are you? You're, like, you're, no, but, you're nothing. But she thought she was already her. Yeah. And, and she was, but, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> they do, yeah. Well, they do say things are funny, but they often say things that are profound. And that's the bit where you go, whoa, yeah, wow, that's, that's, mm. that's interesting. Yeah, because I'd never think like that. No. <laughs> Jamal, and it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Um, good to see you, David. Uh, likewise, always good to see you. And say hello to the wife and kids for me. I shall. And, um, and <laughs> I can't wait to watch this back because I had a lot of laughs. Yeah. Uh, you've been watching The Art Hunter. I'm David Hunt, and we'll see you again real soon. But not with him, though. No. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>